Hi everyone, Uncle Max here from Life to the Max. You know me, I gotta do something right when I think about it or otherwise it's, uh, it's like slaying dragons and those dragons get dropped. You push them down into the ocean and they're swarming around along with a thousand other dragons to slay. The time to slay them is when they rear their ugly heads and that's the time to deal with them. So, what's the dragon today? Driving my dad's old forerunner that I've been working off by improving, fixing is this new fourth gen forerunner so this third gen forerunner still a great amazing off-roading vehicle uh, my sons have been using it to haul around a little trailer with a couple of mowers on it a lot of wear and tear anyhow uh it wouldn't start we managed to jump start this morning and i thought well let's get one of these little portable jump starters plus i got 20 foot really heavy gauge jumper cables so my son didn't want to stop and fill up with gas. When he did, he couldn't get it started again. He tried to jump start it, they couldn't jump start it. So I come all the way out there and I think, well, let me see if he hooked them up properly and let's let's try everything, making sure the contacts are really great. And it just sounded like that solenoid was, was seized up in the starter. So we thought, oh, maybe it's a starter. So there's a good Samaritan, bless his heart. And he offered a hammer and tools and he even towed me out of the way so I wasn't blocking the pumps. And uh, I took a vehicle that's, uh, has a hitch on it so my son can haul that other trailer around anyhow so we were getting ready we took the the guy had tools and his daughter was there his little daughter in that car seat she's just a gem super sweet and <laughs> allowed us to work on this thing and he took her out of the car so that and it was a cool day so it wasn't hot anyway but i mean it went from summer to winter real quick anyhow he uh so she was nearby in her little car seat slash stroller combo kind of thing. Just sitting there watching us, it's the sweetest little thing. And uh, I said, well, wait till she turns to, you never know. <laughs> Anyhow, so this guy was really helpful. He had tools and we started to pull the, the, the skid plate off and he's talking to his boss and uh, to make sure that it was okay to maybe even tow it to my, my place where I've got a, a shop and a lift. And I got for uh, a really good deal. I traded some stuff, and got it installed. So that was very helpful to have that lift. Anyhow, he, uh, we thought, you know what? I want to try one last thing because sometimes when you when you have a starter that's going out, the connections there might be just a small portion of those connections as it rotates around that it lands on that little spot that just doesn't quite have a good contact. It just means it's wearing out, but. And so sometimes you might be able to get it to start. Sometimes if you if you put it into neutral, roll a little bit, and then hit it into park, it kind of jolts the engine just enough. You're not slamming it hard, but it jolts it just enough to turn that starter and jiggle it a little bit to a place where it does have a good contact. And then you can and then you can focus on driving. So that's what I need to do here for a second. So sometimes you can jiggle it and get it to where there's a contact on the starter and it'll start which just means you've got to get your starter rebuilt or replaced so go to AutoZone or you can sometimes find a place in your your town or your city uh, that rebuilds star starters and all the neighbors and there's actually kits that you can buy if you know what you're doing you can rebuild one on your own new brushes new contacts and everything anyhow if nothing else go to AutoZone and you got your points and it adds up if you uh, are saving up points because you buy wisely just over $20 purchases you know if you have two brakes or two two control arms you need to get and they're $30 each don't buy them all at once at 60 you can buy them at 30 or 30 or 25 and you know 32 and then you got two more points that's worth eight bucks plus your military first responder discount and uh, other things sometimes you get rebates get bonus cards back for five dollars whatever those rebates are worth it if you just do it you gotta be consistent 80 percent of people don't use a rebate so force yourself to, the second i get home i am filling this out i'm not eating dinner i'm not doing anything i'm gonna get it done knock it out slay that dragon if you leave it to be slain later it's gonna be forgotten and that's where they make their money is they don't end up paying out on these rebates you think you got a good deal they got the extra money here's the deal the guy says your battery might have a draw in it. It might be shorting out and, and drawing so much of the power to the battery that not enough of it's getting to the starter. So let's disconnect the battery cables and just put the jumper cables onto the battery cables 
and leave the battery out of it completely. Start it right up. I've never heard that before. I thought, so what if the battery shorted out? You can always, you know, you're still connected to the cables, which goes right to the starter. I did not know that uh, even of a uh, heavy diesel and some thick, thick, heavy grade, I mean, these babies are serious, 20 feet of heavy gauge cable, and that wouldn't do it. There's not enough power from that big diesel. So, that's another thing you can try. Also, having some starter fluid there. If you have a weak battery and you're having a hard time getting that car started because it might have to start a little bit and chug, 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 and you need it to go vroom the second you, you put that, uh, you, you turn that key. Then sometimes if you have a weak battery, you can put, uh, shoot about two or three seconds of starter fluid into the uh, air intake, uh, you know, open it up where the filter is and just shoot it right in there, run over and start the car really fast. If you have very little battery left and you might be able to get it started with that weak battery. I, I'm not sure what the best value is on some of these, but uh, this one will charge up your cell phones, tablets, whatever, probably six eight times and I've literally jump started a car with one of these before you know what I'm wondering if I can take those cables off and jump start it with just that battery and see see if it'll work maybe see how many times I can jump start happy to get a little review on this thing but uh, right now we jump start it just cables to cables no battery just took the, took the, took the battery turn the battery cables off and put them on the jumper cables and it worked. So I put them back on just so that uh, there's there's a load, even if it's a dummy load, for that extra power to go to. Even if it's a questionable battery, it's better to have something there than a bunch of cables flopping around loose. And you don't want your positive battery cable touching the negative body on your vehicle, and shorting something out. So so I'm heading home. Thankfully, I can do that without this guy having to try to tow me home or put it on a trailer or anything. And the cool part is the guy's a gunsmith and I need some work on some firearms and I wanted to see if that what I wanted to have done is a, a possibility. It could be a really cool setup. So anyhow, coming home, I'm going to park this thing, get the battery out of it, take it over to my zone, have them test it. It's an interstate battery and so I'm going to see if it's under warranty because it's only 5 of 18 and it's 9 of 20. So. It should still have at least a three-year warranty on it. So. That is less for today. If you have a hard time starting, jump it. But jump it properly. Remember, start from the red of the dead. The red of the dead, the positive terminal on the dead car. Then you follow the red, which means you go to the other red, and you hook it to the vehicle that's got power. It's working. Then you switch to the black, which means you switch the black cables onto the other terminal, and then you follow it back. When you follow it back, everyone likes to go terminal to terminal, and that's not best. When you go positive terminal of the dead to positive terminal of the powered vehicle, negative terminal of the powered vehicle, and you're not supposed to hook it to the negative terminal on the battery. You're supposed to hook it to the frame some negative ground on the vehicle some vehicles have a designated place saying put the negative cables here and that's good so those engineers did a good job making it really obvious that's where you hook it other cars you're like trying to find a ground somewhere in the body you know a, a bolt that's something you know that you can hook it to but if that doesn't work then consider uh, and if it doesn't turn over at all consider taking the terminals off and hooking this to the positive brake cable and the negative side to the negative cable, make sure that none of them are touching the body anywhere and they're not going to bounce around. And it worked. It started right up. So now I know I got a good starter. That will save me a lot of work. Got to put the skid plate back on. But I'm here at my shop and um, now I just wait for that skid plate. Uh, I need to clean it off anyway. I'm, something's leaking in there, so I'll be able to find out what's leaking. So anyhow, that's the tip for today. We'll catch you later. Max out.